Welcome to the Farmer Brad podcast. On today's episode, we're going to talk about how to deal with loss on the farm and much more. Stay tuned. So the question I want to present to you is on the farm, how do you deal with livestock loss, farm pets, and the such? So on our farm, we have chickens, we have sheep, we have some chickens that we raise for meat birds and others that we raise for eggs. Now, just within those categories, meat birds, they're on our farm for a short period of time, eight to nine weeks. We don't give them names. They all look the same. And that's one way that we're able to just do what we got to do as a farmer and raise the birds up the best we can and just give them one bad day. Now, when it comes to layer birds, they are on the farm for a lot longer. Usually two to three, maybe four years depends on what your approach is, whether or not you call them for uh, soup birds after they stop laying or whether or not you continue it on. So with those, a lot of times the different breeds, you're able to tell them apart easier. You're able to give them names. You're able to understand their personality a little bit better. So there's that more, uh, emotional connection with layer birds. Plus there's that transaction of you feed them, they provide you with nutritious eggs that you can eat for breakfast. So recently on our farm, I went to do the chores in the morning and I found one of our roosters dead. It looked like it had been attacked by one of our smaller breed roosters, a bantam rooster. Now this rooster was the first rooster that my oldest daughter was able to name and she named it Giddy Up. Now this rooster, we ended up free ranging him for about a month because he was having difficulty adjusting to the main flock. So what I do is I have them free range for a period of time still providing them with food and water outside the main area. Then I try to reintroduce reintroduce them into the flock so that then they can start the pecking order over and hopefully find their place. Well, Giddy Up was this awkward rooster that seemed surprised by everything and just was a little odd, but he was a great rooster. He would roam around and just was a good, nice rooster. Now, when it came to winter time, I needed to put my hens and move them from the coops that I had in what I call as chicken city or chicken town. Um, I had to move them inside the barn where I have a corn crib that has two chicken coop sections. One side has the older, more mature birds. The other side has the ones that haven't started to lay to some of the nicer hens. So I ended up putting Giddy up on the left side, the one with the younger birds. But In that group, there also ended up being some bantam roosters and hens. Now, since I've been raising chickens for probably going on four years now, the worst roosters I've ever had were bantam roosters. I feel like they have a Napoleon Dynamite, not Napoleon Dynamite, but Napoleon complex about them. Even though they're small, they act super tough. Well, so I went in and did the chores the other day and 
I knew, noticed that there was a little bit of drama that had been going on, and I thought that they would kind of figure it out. Well, I went in today, and sure enough, the Bantam had killed Giddy Up. Now, I wasn't sure how I was going to tell my oldest daughter. My wife made sure don't tell her right away early in the morning because she needs to have a good rest of the day. She recommended to try to tell her um, maybe in the spring or later that evening. So I got home from my day job and I decided to have my oldest help me with some chores. I figured that if she was in the action of doing chores and stuff, she'd be slightly distracted. Uh, but I went in ahead and told her I just wanted to pull the bandaid off right away. She just bursted it into tears and I comfort her with a hug. And I talked to her about the sort of the circle of life when it comes to farm animals, that not all of the animals are going to survive forever. And that when they do, the important part is to repurpose the animals. So I end up burying Giddy Up in the garden and Giddy Up will help nourish the soil by composting down and helping for new life to grow out of the garden. Another way that if you have a hen that has been attacked by a predator, you can use that in a live cage in order to trap more predators to help sustain the life of your hens on your farm. So it's all about the circle of life and making a positive out of a negative. So that seemed to click with her. And then we continued on to do our chores. And then we ended up walking back towards the garden so that if she had any words she could say to Giddy Up. And I'll play a clip of what she said in this little segment. I wish Giddy Up was still alive. Yeah, you wish Giddy Up was still alive. He was actually the first chicken I knew to or a rooster. Yeah. I miss him. But you did a good job naming him. It was a good name for him. <laughs> and then I, I, I how I, I can go over there and see what else I can call videos. Like take his way and put on the windows. Like you want to name another rooster uh yeah. giddy up? Yeah. Okay. So my oldest ended up suggesting the idea of continuing on the name of Giddy Up which we've done that before when one of our sheep died. His name was Bruce. And so then I ended up naming the next ram that I got on the farm, Bruce. So I went with her into the chicken coop and we selected out a new giddy up chicken. So this is a great way to continue on the legacy of the name and be reminded of a great chicken or a great farm animal in the process. So thanks for listening and hope you enjoyed this podcast and make sure to subscribe. This has been the Farmer Brad Podcast. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.